Hi everybody, hello sisters. Uh, welcome back to Lesbian News Flash edition. I don't remember what number. Um, I hope you are all well. Uh, my name is Angela Wilde and I'm here with uh, Sarah Labris and we are bringing you some uh, Mexican lesbian poetry uh, and women poetry tonight. Um, so just a quick word to introduce Lesbian News Flash. We are a short Facebook Live uh, that we organize as Get the Hell Out. And it's really all about interrupting your regular Facebook feed with a bit of lesbian visibility, with lesbian positivity. Um, and I think goodness knows we need that uh, in this day and age. I hope you are all surviving your, uh, you've all survived your Pride Month and uh, you haven't uh, gone to Pride. Um, so Lesbian News Flash is all about giving visibility to really cool lesbian projects, the kind of stuff you would not hear about on other mainstream or, the, or straight channels. So what I would always like to say is that if you're involved in creating lesbian art, lesbian music, lesbian activism, women only spaces, any kind of activism um, that is creative, we want to know about it. So please be in touch. So today um, we are bringing you some lesbian, uh, Mexican lesbian and women poetry, and I'm going to leave that to Sarah to uh, introduce our guest. Yes, hi. We are very proud and uh, honored to have uh, Shedani Jack Ray uh, as a guest tonight to talk about uh, one of her projects. So Shedani is a Mexican lesbo feminist and a cultural disseminator of women's poetry for women. You can already know it's really cool what she does. Exactly. <laughs> uh, so she's a co-founder of Poesia de Moras, uh, a, les uh, a feminist, sorry, a feminist poetry project that she founded together with uh, Nayeli Lavaga. So uh, they've got, Poesia de Moras has got a Facebook page, uh, an Instagram account. I'm just going to show quickly the Facebook page of Poesia de Moras. Here we are, I think, can you see it? Yes? Yeah. So it is this page which is massively followed and uh, you update it uh, every day with uh, poems you receive from lesbians, mainly in Spanish. And from what I saw from all over uh, South America and Central America, which is uh, really important to, to see. So I'm just gonna give uh, the mic to you, uh, Shadani, and... Um, uh, ask you if you can uh, tell us a little bit more about uh, Poesia de, de Moras. Okay, yeah. <laughs> can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Well, uh, thank you for having me here for your invitation. And now I'm going to talk a little bit about Poesia de Moras. Uh, this is a project we started uh, with Nogeli. And yeah, we have like this. Uh, with this idea about uh, the poetry dissemination in the world is just for men and also in social media. So we started thinking about how to, we, how, how we can do to make um, more vis visible the, 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 the women poetry. So we started um, sharing poetry. They start just in Mexico, but later we we were in all latin america so yeah um a part of our we have like this it's a a, a kind of uh call to accept poems and i'm gonna read like a, so i don't so i don't get lost i i, I want to read something we we write if you want to share poetry with us we we said uh, we don't we don't accept poems of romantic love, heterosexuality, adoration for men, classism, racism, cultural appropriation, compulsory motherhood, uh, fat phobia, the demand of beauty, competition and rivalry between women, lesbo hate, vindication of prostitution, inclusive language because in Spanish the feminine is with the letter A. And the querism here uh, made the inclusive language mm, with the letter X. So we are invisible again with the inclusive uh, language. So yeah, that, that is a part of our call if you wanna share a poem with, with us. So yeah, we're so happy this project is so 
loved here in, in, in Latin America. And, and yeah, we also say this, this page is a feminist page. So we accept just uh, poetry for women, for, for women. So you can write, your mother can write, your sister can write. And we, we are loved to, yeah, we, we are so, so amazed with all the poetry we read uh, from think, yeah, you know, girls to like old ladies. So we are so, so excited and thank you. Thank you for having me here. Yeah, I, I think your, uh, your enthusiasm, your, your love for what you do is really visible. I'm, I'm really enjoying this. This is just so warm and, uh, and I love how you frame it as well. Like these are the rules and, you know, excellent. <laughs> Yes, I think it's really important to show that uh, you decided on some rules and that those rules are very important to keep a project, you know, feminist and women centered. Uh, and uh, it's really intersectional and it's taking a lot of different issues that radical feminism is talking about. It's not just about one thing. Uh, transactivism, yes, it's important and it's also a problem in your country, as we will talk about later, but the rules, it reminds us that, you know, it's a radical feminism, lesbian communities and lesbian culture are about big, uh, coherent stuff. So can you, like, uh, why, um, for you on an individual level, how does it make you feel to be part of Poesia de Moras, did it, like what did it bring to, to you as, a, as an individual woman, as, a, as a, an individual lesbian? Yeah, I, I, I feel so uh, lucky every day because I wake up reading poetry of women, right? Like it, it, it uh, like it, that changed my life. It's like every day I know a little bit uh, a woman I I don't know like I don't I, I haven't met her in because it's in another country or or something like that but I know something about her because I'm reading it so that it's to me that it's like something with so much love between us and also uh, after yeah I'm, I'm making the vision of the poem and then I you know I, I post the poem and then there is like another <laughs> shot of love in my heart because I start reading all the, the, the comments about the poetry they, the, uh, they, they just read. So they, I, I think like every day I know we are feeling the same. We are having the same struggles and we are having the same, I don't know, kind of love uh, like we have a lot of poetry about our moms or our grandmas. I don't know. We 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 do like to talk about them. So it's it's poetry between us and for us. And yeah, I think every day I think I'm loving a, a different woman. Like every every time I read it. So yeah, it's something really. I, I feel so, so lucky to be a part of this project because it's like a lot of love between us and I can read it. It's something literally, it's something literally, literal in, in, in the, in the, in the mail. So yeah, that makes me happy every day, every, every morning. Nice. <laughs> it's really wonderful to see like that you create the connection. It's, uh, it's very visible the way you explain it, that that creativity and art and poetry cr create the connection between women. I feel like um, just a quick point that we are so in, in reaction to a lot of hostility to all the stuff that happens to us. And very often our activism is about fighting that. And it, it can turn into something that is very draining and negative and difficult and when I see you and hear you speaking with such a big smile about what you do and the connection you create you know between women and the love and oh <laughs> I mean I can't remember. It's, it's just really great it's it's another way to do things it's probably the way to do things because it's it's feeding us right yeah I think it's a, like a part of the resistance uh, this resistance is also love it's also yeah loving each other and yeah i think if we share our stories 
is something more um, easy to know that women have their own stories. Nobody can have these stories. That's that's why we are women and nobody else can be a woman because yes. we have our stories since we, since we were born, you know, yeah. Yes. Yeah, it is a, a physical, biological reality that means then something to live, to experience as a, as a human. It's not something you can just decide and change like one day after the next or it's something that is deeply you, you know, like, and um, it's a, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, our stories, just our stories, yeah. And what, what would you like to to see for the future for, for Poesia de Moras? Do you have like goals in mind? Do you have hopes about the project? Yeah, we are so, we are dreamers. <laughs> like we, we, we enjoy so much uh, having this project. So we dream a lot. We talk a lot about it, all, all the future we want to live. But right now we are making this website. Mm -hmm. um, we are looking for, yeah, for, for lesbian feminists in all the world of like, having this interview with with mm. with feminists in in the world but also we want to make um we, we have every month we have um open mics that is uh, you can go and and read your poetry and just it's it's something to practice it's just for 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 us so yeah it's something we we want to make yeah this year next year when Mm -hmm. And then maybe we, we want to make um, kind of more bigger reunions with women from um, Latin America. We are looking for the way to invite her, invite them wow. um, with the list, uh, with the list. I don't know how to say it. I, I'm, I'm going to use the translator. Yes. Thank you. Sarah. Yeah, because I have the idea, but yeah. yeah. Mm, Yeah, okay, I got it. Yeah, we, we want to invite the, the women in Latin America to come here, uh, but with like a kind of a scholarship or something like that. So we don't have the money. So we are looking for, yeah, how, how to do that. And uh, I, I will, I, will um, I mean, uh, how can I say? Yeah, English is not uh, the first language of everyone. So it's difficult sometimes. <laughs> What I was gonna say, yes, uh, while uh, some uh, women, feminist lesbians are, are watching us and most most of them might be from the West and it's I think it's, an, it's important to call for economic solidarity. And uh, if you ever have a, a fundraising page or anything to, to share, like feel free to send it to us. And then I hope that uh, the, our view, viewers and the women who follow what we do like can give a bit and it really makes a difference. So it's really important to, to do this economic solidarity. Yeah, thank you so much. We are, yeah, we are trying to make also that like, but thank you. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna write you when we have when we get that. Yeah, thank you. Can I ask a question? Because you just said you had open mics. They were in real life open mics or are they online open mics? You meet in like how is it working? Yeah, we have the uh, on real life and also online. So in real life, we uh, the last one was in uh, um, in um, ah. sorry, okay. yeah, in a forest. Wow. Yeah, we in a forest. We, wow. Yeah, Mexico City has like a little forest in. in close to downtown so yeah we we get together there so yeah and that that is uh something we we can i think it's important to to see us in person because we can cry and mm. laugh and yeah also cough if we want uh, when we read so yeah it's like a really important part i we we, we like to do we love 
open mics. Um, and also online, because in we don't we we are not in all Latin America. So mm. for for that for that event who who wants to join joins we 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 have these open mics in on, online. And also we have um, we just started making this kind of reading class. So we are reading right now a Mexican. Yeah, she was. Um, yeah, a Mexican writer. Writers. So we have, we we have been so so amazed with with that with that. Uh, with it, her name is Elena Garro. Elena Garro. And uh, and yeah, we we like to read together and talk about about her life and about her her write her text because it's like a horrible story in in, in a in a part because she was married with Octavio Paz who is really famous in Latin America he got a novel so and also he was really 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 mean to Elena Garro so he asked Elena to born their their own text like the the pages to yeah i don't know they were in the kitchen and he he begged to burn the 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 right so yeah we are so so into elena because of that too mm -hmm. good it's it's um I, it's fascinating. I'm I'm just reading. I was reading through the comments. A lot of uh, lesbian and women say hello, and they're like, "Oh, it, it's wonderful to hear you." I I absolutely agree. Um, I wanted to so I wanted to go back to what you were saying that there were some themes you know that you were encouraging more than others, and something that you were you know restricting obviously for being anti-women and anti-feminist. What what kind of themes? Um, but you know, when, when you receive poems, do you have some, like, wait, what kind of themes, what kind of poem do you receive? Like, in general, well, it's yeah. like, I think, of, well, like, a lot of, of women like to talk about their, obviously, uh, women friends, so they, they write a lot of love poems for them. I think that it's just like, again, love between women, uh, but also I think they, they like to talk about life um, and about sadness and, how, and being, being a woman and being sad. Uh, also about grandmothers, I, I'm a little bit amazed because they, they really like to talk about grandmothers and also lost, also dead, because yeah, you know, like, like uh, grandmother who passed away so yeah also mm, animal friends like dogs like cats oh. we, I, I love reading uh, poetry <laughs> about all, all the love they have for for the the cats and and, and the dog friends and yeah about the the moms and the relationship between their moms I think that it's something important and mm. yeah it's it's really yeah yeah i think it's important about it and also nature i think women love love to to write about nature so i yeah i think that that's the most you more or less i i yeah. read so far away from the stereotype uh, uh, from men about women writing you know like so very far away from the patriarchal uh, yeah even even if if, if they haven't uh read the um, the rules mm. Mm, about not not writing about uh loving men we haven't we haven't received anything uh, like just in 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 three years maybe two mm. love for them and yeah i think we are not yeah in, in general women are not uh really thinking about writing love poetry for them i think they are more into mom friends animals nature and really also our biology sorry because i i um i there are many many 
poems about menstruation mm -hmm. and how to yeah um, and being a mother also also that like having life in or in in their future so i think that it's important too yes can you read some of them yeah i have <laughs> but what like all of just some <laughs> just the ones you you selected uh, for tonight okay. yes okay well uh the poems are in spanish but i can like give you the context about it yes so i choose a one from alma alma she has um she she is uh 16 years and she uh, so i'm gonna read it and then i'm going to uh, I'll, I'll give you the context um, me molesta tanto tener que despertar mientras en mi mente bailo al lado de mis recuerdos detesto tener que dejar mi trinchera donde mi llanto me da el coraje que me faltaba ni siquiera tengo el tiempo de relatar mi paraíso inconsciente y enseguida me arrastra mi poco esfuerzo al baño donde una luz clara me deja ver mi cara llena de ganas de volver a mis sueños Mis ojos exclaman fuerte cuando se llenan de color rojo. Mira lo que nos hiciste. Y a eso suelo contestarles que la noche nos acogerá por un tiempo y sin falta. Well, um, this is a poem about going to sleep and then how you wake up and she tried to, yeah, she tried to tell us how hard it is for her just waking up without remembering the dreams mm. and also mm, yeah looking looking at her in the mirror and wondering what it's gonna be the next night i think it's really really beautiful poem. Yeah. yes well I'm, I'm gonna read another one yeah this is um from connie Carvalho, she's from Oaxaca, here in Mexico. Ma, después de mucho he de entenderte. Quizá de joven decía que eras ausente, pero no entendía tu agonía latente. No entendía el miedo que tenías, no entendía las cicatrices que cosías día con día. Hoy después de mucho he de entenderte y he de atar a la niña en ti, que también creció con ganas de vivir. And this is about, uh, it's a poem for her mom. Uh, it, in, in, it's about how she has Bruno and now she understands her mom. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and she wants to be nice with her mom, but also her mom as uh, when, when she was little, like, I don't know, like, like a hug for her mom, but also the little, the little that not, not the mom, just the younger person he was when she wasn't a mom. And yeah, this is from Patricia, and she's from Ecuador. Amiga, dime que puedo hacerlo. Dime que puedo lograrlo. Dime que soy capaz. Porque el mundo me ha dado, me ha hecho crecer lo contrario, creer lo contrario. Amiga, dime que el miedo va a pasar, que voy a superar las fobias y pesadillas. Amiga, dime que mis manos dejarán de temblar y las lágrimas florecerán, porque en el mundo me ha hecho creer lo contrario. Amiga, dime que seré escuchada, dime que estarás a mi lado, dime que no me abandonarás, porque el mundo me ha hecho creer lo contrario. And this is about friendship, and she's ask, asking uh, her friend, please tell me everything is going to be okay because the war has seen me the opposite. Uh, yeah, it's about the resistance between friends and how they can, and with their love, how they can re resist in this war. Like, so I think it's so, so beautiful. And yeah, this is from Andrea Sanchez from Costa Rica. Quiero reparar los hilos con mi madrecita querida, y si no se puede, tejer otros, porque parece que ya no sirven los que desde el vientre se cortaron. Parece que desde que yo nací no logramos conectarnos. Quiero tejer los hilos con mi madrecita querida, para que cuando haga frío, 
ambas podamos cobijarnos y hacernos compañía. Quiero cuidar el tejido con mi madrecita querida, para que su legado sea fuerte y cuando le veamos tendido, sepamos que no fue en vano haber osado un día reparar con nuestras manos los hilos que ya no sirven. And it, this is also about uh, for for her mom, but like they have not like a really good relationship. So she wanted to figure out how they can be together in another way because at the beginning it was not like the best beginning. So she is figuring out how to do it to get together again with love. I think that can speak to a lot of uh, of us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yes, the themes are so so wonderful. I I wanted to kind of point when you were talking about the theme that women choose that like less like women's spaces are so precious, and they it's so great that women understand them as so precious that they're centering themselves in it, and it's not always the case. So I, I think it's it's really really beautiful. All these poems, I mean. I, I re regret I didn't listen to my Spanish grandmother more and learn Spanish, but now <laughs> I will. Oh <laughs> yes. Yes. You have, uh, maybe you have some more? <laughs> do, yes, yes would you have some more? Do you, do you have some more poems? Okay, yeah. Yeah? yeah. It's up maybe. to you, uh, like... Uh, okay. It's... Maybe I can read, maybe like two or three more? Two, yeah. Four? Okay. <laughs> Uh, well, this is from um, Claudia Castillo. She is in Ciro, but she is Mexican. So she told us that I'm Mexican and I'm in Ciro. Um, Flores. Y llega el momento de decirle adiós al dolor, de abrir puertas y ventanas, y aceptar que nos equivocamos, a pesar de haber utilizado todos los recursos disponibles que había en su momento. El tic-tac del reloj señalando las horas recordándonos que el tiempo no se detiene, que pasa, que nos apuremos a perdonarnos y a darnos el cariño que quizá no, se, no hemos recibido. Recordamos a todas las que han quedado en el camino, en la lucha. Reconocemos a la mujer del espejo y le damos la bienvenida. Nos despedimos de la culpa y del miedo. Llegó la primavera. Uh, this is about time and flowers and wheat. So she she uh, used us uh, used all those words to talk about um, honor the woman who left us and also to leave that bad um, situation because spring has yeah well wow. and yeah this is from Claudia she's from Peru ya no llores. Ya no llores sola, lloremos las dos, porque a mí me duele tu dolor, porque después de llorar las dos estaremos bien. Hazlo con coraje, corazón, porque te hicieron daño. ¿Te sientes mejor? Iremos a la plaza y compraremos chocolate caliente, y comerás pan dulce y veremos las luces de Navidad. Hoy ya nada importa, solo estamos las dos. Estaremos bien. Llora fuerte, corazón, para que eso pase. Te amo. And this is about, I love, I love this poem because um, the first word is don't cry and the next is don't cry alone. Let's cry together. Oh, yeah, it's so yeah. nice. <laughs> yes. And uh, this is from uh, Nidia, she's from Honduras. El vacío se vuelve parte de mí. Entre recuerdos aún te siento aquí. Luego veo tu cama, ya no estás ahí. Un nudo en la garganta me carcome y me hace desear morir. Nubes negras están sobre mí y la incógnita del querer saber qué hubiera pasado si aún estuvieras aquí me hace pensar en lo sobrevalorado que es vivir. Esta casa se siente vacía sin ti. Sin embargo, tu olor y presencia aún está aquí. Nunca olvidaré tu sonrisa al verme venir y tu beso al despedir. Serás lo más hermoso que me ha tocado vivir. Abuela, mi corazón siempre será a ti. Mi vieja amiga, mi alma rota brillará por ti. Mi viejita, el atardecer me recuerda a ti, tan hermoso como para ser real, y en las noches se desvanecerá. Nos hemos de encontrar entre atardeceres bonitos y noches estrelladas. Mi alma no te olvida y aquí permanecerás guardada. And this is about, uh, she lost her grandmother, so she says she, 
she meets she meets her uh, but for her it's something important to watch the night and the stars because for her her grandmother is there mm. yeah grief women's grief as well is really uh, interesting to to hear being expressed because we are not allowed to express grief and sadness um, in this men's world so yeah thank we you so much for these readings honestly it's really it's beautiful we have in the chat uh Saris who is um who said that she also sent her first poem to you when she was 16 and she oh wow nothing now and uh, you know when we were talking about the connection you know <laughs> <laughs> And uh, as you already mentioned a few times, um, the topic of love between women uh, is very important in your project. And uh, when we had a, a, this, a chat the first time uh, you and I met, um, you also told me that uh, love between women was a very important topic in the feminist, in the radical feminist movement uh, in Mexico. And I found this so interesting to hear because uh, in the UK, we don't really talk about that publicly. Like, of course, we when we have discussions between lesbian radical feminists, we, we talk about everything. But politically, like, we are kind of stuck at lesbians don't like penises, you know? <laughs> so, like, it's really so good to hear that uh, you are part of a movement who talks about this love between women. And that's why I think it's, uh, like, if you want to talk about more um, now it's, uh, it would be really good to to hear yeah um yeah i think here we have like we are really into that because yeah we we can say we don't we don't like men but we don't want to like stay there we, we want to like talk about well we we don't like men but the most important here is we love women so yeah um and not just like having a couple is like i love my mom i love my sister i love my friends and they love me and it's amazing when they are yeah i know a, a, a lot of, of young or young women who start um reading about the love between women and and making and yeah, yeah they they for her for for them it's like a lot of sense uh, this love so they they became lesbian feminists or lesbians or yeah in the 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 process like i don't know the, their process but yeah knowing the the important thing here or, or part of the important thing in 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 the radical movement it's love between us and this like for, for us and here at least in, in in my concept we say like this like this is like a really really strong resistance talking about loving be, yeah, yeah loving each other and yeah literally talk about it saying it loud i love you i love i love my my girlfriends i love my sisters i love my cousins i in love with all of them because I admire them. So yeah, we we like to talk a lot about that. And and it's something really important here. We we are not like staying just in this this part, like we are separatists, yeah, but we also like to yeah talk about love between us. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, and it's like when you are separatist, actually for it to really work and to really mean something to you as a, as a, as a, as a human, you know, you need all these positive emotions. Otherwise it's just an empty struggle. Uh, so like, at least if you are fighting for your loves, your different types of love and then it really means something. It's, yeah, as you say, it's not just that we don't like men, actually, it's 
first we love women, but actually loving women means disliking men and what they do to our sisters, to our girlfriends, to our uh, mothers and so on. Because they do horrible stuff to our loved ones, then we are forced to dislike them. But um, yeah. Yeah, and I think it's something like if you think a really like like a really strong thing like if you love women and you know men are making so bad things to these women you love you're not gonna love men like it's something yeah something yeah. if you think it's also what really strikes me is as much as separatism is forbidden uh, loving women is forbidden uh, and saying that we love women is forbidden and so there's, there's really a meaning when patriarchy does that to us there's really it's it's all the more a political point to say it um, how we feel <laughs> it's not just to say it but to to express how we feel about 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 that I think it's it can't it, for me it cannot be not framed in a in a in a political way it is you know that's why the word separatism is so important it's you know not only that we separate because we have to for, for survival most of the time but because this is the only way we can really be ourselves and do these things that are forbidden like love each other and also love ourselves a lot of the poems you were talking about they were about connection but they were also about our own relationship to ourselves and as women how often do we have that in patriarchy? If we are in any connection with men, we are carers. Most of the time, we are carers to children, we are carers to... Um, so that really struck me that, you know, being able to express one's feelings so deeply, you have to be really in touch with you. Yeah, and, and as you know, like, here we say uh, personal, the, the personal stuff is political stuff. So, mm -hmm. yeah, here it's 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 that. In, and it's like something we we will like, a way to to say all day we love each other and we are finding finding us uh while we are loving the other ones we are finding us is you can write and if you write you find yourself and if you find yourself you can love the other one the, the other the other women so i think like it's like a cycle and and yeah it's something so political so yeah Yes. It really struck me as well as, um, you know, like it felt, obviously I don't understand the Spanish language so well, <laughs> but it felt like like a series of love letters to each other. Like That's yeah. how I see your, your, your project. It felt like women writing love letters to each other, like mm. on and on. And it's, it's so interesting. It, <laughs> yeah, because also here the concept of poetry, it was so academic and so for men. At, at first they were uh, women who write so afraid to like like they they write sorry if this is not a poem but mm. I want to show you this and we say you are writing poetry we don't care about the academic rules you we we feel when I we, when we read you we feel a lot of fabulous thing so you are writing poetry and also you are a writer because here also the, the, the women say uh i'm not a writer but i have this text mm -hmm. and they say no you're a writer because they're writing so yeah it's this is like also it's an invitation for all of you if you if you write you're a writer <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah that is something we say here and, it, and yeah, as you know uh, as you say angela yeah it's something it, it, they, they are like love uh, love letters but but if you read it you you feel something is poetry it's pure poetry yeah yes yeah. yeah it's all about uh, communicating emotions your emotions communicate them in a way that brings emotions in the woman who is reading you and then i guess that's poetry when you manage to do that absolutely <laughs> yeah so cool. And um, how, so this love between women that you discuss in radical feminism in, in Mexico, uh, it brings us to the topic of uh, 
your feminist movement um, from what you said last time we talked and from what we can see on social media like um, the like it's really striking that uh, radical feminism in Mexico looks like you are way more women uh, and lesbian radical feminists than in the UK for example uh, like proper radical feminist I'm saying yes <laughs> and uh, it looks also like you are doing like really different types of actions and sometimes really like direct street actions and uh, it was a point uh, we wanted to to talk about with you uh, tonight because uh, we need uh, I think from a UK perspective it's really important to to hear uh, what uh, what you are doing uh, in the street actions uh, to, to show that there are many ways of doing feminism of doing change um and uh, yes so yeah i think uh, our last meeting we talking about we, we, we were talking about uh the difference between uh, also you saw the, the, you watch this news about uh the, the uh, mexican march here a feminist uh, yeah and, and we were talking about it um, yeah, here, uh, I don't know how it started, I don't have the information, like, the, the, the information, like, I wanted to, to have, but here we have, um, we, we, we have the direct, yeah, street actions, we smash, we broke, we paint, and also we have a lot of support if, if uh, like the marches are really, really huge, the, the feminist march here. So if, if, if women don't want to make that kind of direct, the uh, streets, streets um, stuff, they support us. Um, they, they, they have like some words, they yell when we are, making this kind of things or, or where, where when they are making it they say uh the police don't don't uh, don't take care of me uh, my friends and these these radical families take care of me because they are smashing or painting for me and if I disappear they're gonna smash and they're gonna and that it's something that that it's love for me even if they don't know me they are gonna do it so that it's something we i think um in radical feminists um, it's something they do a lot um most recently uh some march have this kind of black blocks too they started to do it but i think the organization is different <laughs> And uh, yeah, I think uh, radical feminists are really, really organized in, in that in that kind of uh, actions. And yeah, that is something we, or yeah, we make a lot here in, in the city also because I think it's important to say like it's different the, the kind of manifestation here in Mexico City and in another state of Mexico. Yeah, mm -hmm. we have like the opportunity to, to make it. Mm. In a way, um, one, one point when you're talking about the kind of activism and direct action and smashing, um, like it feels in Europe at some point there was uh, a movement that understood that the system had to be not only changed and lobbied and campaigned against, but actually just kind of, the, we had to be in a position against the system, we had to smash it. And we don't really have that as a movement here. So it's really refreshing to hear um, I mean, it reminds me of that. I don't know how much I'm, I'm projecting into it or if it's really what is going on, but it feels like, you know, there's an understanding that, you know, you're not just breaking for the sake of it, you're breaking something that is damaging to us. Yeah, here uh, we, it's something controversy for the people in general because um, the paintings are also in monuments. Mm -hmm. um, in this kind of status, I don't know how to say it in English. Um, yeah, like monuments made by men. So yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, it's something really. Um, yeah, it, it's something that 
and most people are not with us, but I think this information has been like for like we are here here in Mexico, we are a little bit more than men in population. So I think like a lot of, of women are with us, even if they are they if they don't call themselves feminists. So mm. yeah, I think it's something something important. They they say uh, we don't care if they smash or if they paint the monument because uh, the woman's life is in very important yeah it's really good to hear that you know you don't have uh, people women telling you that you're giving feminism a bad name so it's nice, <laughs> nice to hear that. thanks <laughs> yeah because uh, yeah i think like in the uk because of all those differences political and cultural differences um i think uh it wouldn't be well received by the movement, by the feminist movement, if a, a group was starting to smash uh, things. Uh, we wouldn't have a lot of sisterhood, I think. I, I maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> maybe we're, understandably for many legitimate reasons as well, like, but you know, I'm, just the contrast is interesting to see. Um, uh, and yeah, I think also, to, sorry, Sarah, sorry. Karen. Because the, like the mainstream, uh, gender critical or even radical feminist movement is uh, really a lot about changing the institutions and trying to do lobbying. So it's way more polite, polite, middle class type of political interactions. Um, so like, for example, as I was telling you last time, uh, the actions of Get Deal Out, like going um, at the front of some pride marches, is like whoa, one of the most radical actions, you know. Like, it's and totally... we're not doing anything. Huh? We're just standing there. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> it's all legal. We are not doing anything illegal or anything. But it's like one of the most like whoa, direct actions you can find. There have been many others as well. It's not just our group, but in terms of intensity, uh, we don't go there. There hasn't been way more. What I find interesting is because you talk like it, there's a link to me about what you say about the poetry expressing oneself, being able to expressing oneself, and then actually what we should all feel in the situation of patriarchy is absolute rage, not all the time, but like a lot of the time, right? And and we don't really have an outlet to express that rage. Yeah. Um, direct action is a way you can do that. Obviously, poetry is a way you can do that too. And I, I think that's why I'm I'm really keen to hear what you were saying and why creative um, activism um, is important because you really are in contact with yourself um, and can really act on that feeling of rage and you know outrage. Yeah, and I think it's something curious because there are a lot of poems about uh, specific smash things in <laughs> wow. March. Nice. Yeah. And yeah, you know, like as 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 I say, maybe in another state it's not like the same, but I I have read um a lot of poetry uh, from women in another in other states who write about, yeah, please uh sister smash everything for me please yeah yeah we have a lot of poetry about it so i think it's yeah you know it's all all the things together in feminism yeah yes so nice so we've got um two questions left but we don't have a limit of time but just uh, in case you want to do both or just one of them it's the the question about you know trans activism uh, how it's a problem for you as well, or the question about how it is to be a lesbian in the movement. So we can either do both or you pick the one you prefer. It's really up to, to what you want. Um, I, I, I think I, I can do both. So yeah. maybe I, I can answer the first one about the trans activism here. Um, yeah. In the page in Poesia de Morras, we have been cancelled by liberal feminist and the queer movement because we um not not it's, it's not like we have like this time but maybe every two months or something like that we talk about this um this topic we also is in the 
in the call out, like when when they want to write a poem for Poesia de Morras, they have to read um, the call out in, in, in that it's about read and accept poetry, queer poetry, right? But also we, we write some stuff about it. So we got canceled every, every two months. But I think that it's something positive in for us because we stay with women who know who knows our ideology, who knows what we think, and they stay with us. Because mm -hmm. you know the pages, I, I, I really love to, to say this, the pages for your mom, uh, for the struggles of your mom or, and your sister, not for the LGBT or whatever. So yeah, they are, they stay, they, they stay and, and we are happy about it. So in the page, we have these kind of cancellations that we don't, we don't care. It's something normal for us now. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And in radical feminists in general here, like we are, we are in Mexico, we are so close from the United States. So I think it's really, really, really popular, all these LGBT um, and queerism things. So it, it's the same. I think it's really into social media uh, stuff. Also some laws or some politi politicians uh, talking about this this topic, but, but I think it's also in social media, this kind of fight or this kind of cancellations. Mm. Uh, but yeah, we have really strong um, trans, activist, uh, trans activist movement here. And I think it's because United States and it's because it's so cool to be queer and mm. fighting for all the people um yeah and I, I i can say that um, also in latin america i think the movement it's also 50 50 maybe if there are radicals and also queer movements so yeah yeah and it seems like it's it's coming a lot from uh you know universities that directly bring western queer ideology to mexican universities and then those, I guess, mostly middle-class students, they, they, they just take this liberal feminist. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's from academy and here we have like really big, yeah, yeah, one university is really big here in Mexico City and it's so pro-trans. Um, so yeah, in, in, in the university is really, really strong that movement. Also, the scholarships, uh, I'm shocked because here we have a scholarship just for women, but right now, you know, the trans mm. women can have that kind of scholarships, and I think that it's something so, so bad, but yeah, it's in university and the academy, it's, mm. yeah, it's something, yeah, like, like we say, it's so political, so when the university know that it's the correct way to to being popular in a good university or a liberal university, they do it. So yeah, we have the, the, that that kind of stuff, right? That's also where the funding is. We hear we hear a lot of stories like that as well. So yeah, yeah you can see the appeal. Yeah. And is it uh, uh, is it sometimes um, physically dangerous uh, to be a lesbian? around these trans activists uh, in your city? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they feel so protect, protected by another women. So yeah, you know, like physically, they, they can be violent whenever they want. If they are, they, if they feel in their space, like every man, like every man feel in their space in this world. So if they feel they, they have been protected, they, they can make a lot of things to us but also as i told you um the, in in feminist march um, the black bloc mm -hmm. also is yeah i think there are um, a few of these kind of activists in the black bloc and making these kind of um actions 
So I think it's dangerous because, yeah, you know, we are, they, they are um, smacking and they are, they, they can be violent so easy. We did another radicals in this, in, in the march. So, yeah, that's why we think that it's so important to be spaces just for us. And we are, yeah, we are trying to make the most safe spaces we can we can make but it's a little bit diff difficult here because they feel so comfortable being so protected by by women lib li liberal feminists so yeah mm. true male entitlement it's very infuriating to hear that uh, like radical feminists started like doing black block actions and they did that to smash patriarchy and now they're stealing these actions and yeah. being violent towards you like mm. women it's just basically the whole story of men in feminism you know like yeah it's depressing to to hear but it's also good to hear that you are kind of 50 50 uh, so it looks like a good uh, minimum or decent like uh visibility of your own ideas and possibility to organize yeah i i, I want to believe it <laughs> i'm not sure if it's 50 50 but i don't know uh, yeah i well i i i watch that in social media maybe it's also my algorithm so <laughs> i don't know but yeah i want to believe it and um so when you organize and do feminism like do you have a lot of uh uh, groups and spaces as a as a lesbian yeah like um, here we have um um we we have um like kind of um i i don't know how to say it uh workshops yeah we, we make yeah. that um, we we make that a lot uh I think we are not like more uh, allotted into parties like parties parties but we make workshop we we read together we study together feminism we like like there are a lot of workshop about um, literature or or about feminism or about psychology about in our perspective and also I don't know yeah we talk about like love but between women but the struggles about like in in, a, in the partner but with, with a partner like i don't know uh, romantic love yeah uh heterosexuality in between lesbian uh, like yeah you know <laughs> it's something something about it so we talk a lot about it and we study a lot here together so yeah we have this this kind of spaces yeah, like you mean uh, how patriarchal dynamics can be there between two women yes it's very yeah. important to, to talk about these as well yes yeah yeah and that is something we talk about here yeah mm -hmm. yes because when you are a lesbian and also a radical feminist it means you want equality in your lesbianism you don't want these domination power brought from gay culture and het male culture. And so it's a lot to deconstruct, um, to be able to be equal and in a healthy way. <laughs> it's a lot of challenges, I think we all know. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, it, it's, it's something we, we have to talk like like loud like loving between us loving between us and how to love between us uh, mm -hmm. and through the heterosexuality dynamics maybe we can have but also we we say that it's uh, it's never going to be the same like being in with a woman that being with a man it's not the same never but Yes. Also, we can yeah, we we have to talk about it, but yeah. Yes. Yes. Do. <laughs> yes. do you want to add anything about this topic or any other topics? I I don't know. I I like to talk a lot. 
I think <laughs> maybe in, in another meeting, if we have some some other meeting, we can talk uh, yes. more about more stuff if yes. you want. Yeah, definitely. Thank you so much. Yeah, that's been fascinating. And whoever here say, think that art or poetry can not be political, obviously you have to listen to it because you know <laughs> it's so clearly not the case. Um, I we've had like loads of really really warm positive comments um, um, from women. Um, so thank you so so much for for talking to us and showing us you know what it's like in your country and what, what you do really really appreciate it I, I appreciated it on a personal level too <laughs> yes thank you thank um, you uh oh sorry no go on also if you want to follow Poesia de Morras is in instagram uh, and facebook if you want to share some poetry with us it, the, the, the invitation is open and it's permanent so if you write if you want to write and if you have a diary and, and you want to share with us something we can yeah we are we're going to be so happy to share your your rights too so the invitation is for all when we when we did the video we will put all that um, okay, thank bottom. you. It will be so, yes. So, we will upload uh, this chat on YouTube once uh, in, a, in a few days or something like that, and you will have all the, all the details there. Um, so, thank you again. As ever, if you are interested to speak, if you have some cool project you want to um, contribute to this conversation, you want to promote your work, uh, please be in touch. And, um, and for tonight, that's going um, to be goodbye. Yes. All right. Bye. Thank you. Bye.